welcome back to the Blue Hub YouTube channel and today we're going to be taking a look at how you can manage landed costs within Deer Systems. Now a landed cost is the overall cost to get that item to your door through your purchase process, a stock transfer or even a production run. There are three ways to manage landed costs in Deer. Now as you can see on the screen here these are the three ways. The first of which is the using the additional costs feature in Deer. Now additional costs is the second box below the actual order itself on a purchase order and you would use this additional cost section for any additional costs that you have incurred from that supplier. So if that supplier is charged you for freight, insurance, packing or any other costs then that's where you would use additional costs. Annual journals is another function within the original purchase order itself and that's where you can simply just apply a cost to the item and you might be tracking the actual invoice that you receive from the um, freight company or shipping company, whatever it may be, and you might be tracking that somewhere else. You just want to track that cost in dear. The final method, using a separate purchase invoice, using the process called we call expense allocation. This is where you want to track not only the purchase order for the original goods, but the purchase order for the freight or the additional costs that you want to um, include against the original PO. And through using this process, you have both those invoices on the system and link them together. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at those today and we'll jump into DIA now and we'll take a look at how you can manage those additional costs. So if I just pull up Deer, we can start taking a look. So on Deer here, we'll go ahead and take a look at the first two methods, which are using additional costs and manual journals. To get started, we can go ahead and click purchase and simple purchase. Once we're in the purchase order itself, we can go ahead and type in our supplier. So we're just going to use a random supplier here. And you could have generated this purchase from any method like the reorder or reorder backward report. We can enter in the item we wish to purchase. We can select our quantity and also our price as well. So the first method is using the additional cost section, which you can see here. And again, this is where we would put in any costs that we have received from that supplier. So if that supplier we've purchased the item from has charged us for anything additional and we want those to be included in the overall cost of our item. So when we receive our cost and we go to sell the item, well, it's not only including the actual physical purchase price for buying the stock, it's including all these other things. So using the additional costs, you just want to simply come in here and type in what you want to attribute. You then want to select in the price and make sure you have a tax rule also applied to your purchase order, which I do not. And quite simply, that's how you apply that to the order. What you can do then to finish off the process, you can go ahead and click authorize. Just let me know there's some issues. It's this tax rule here. We can then receive in the stock. And then when it comes to the invoice, we can go ahead and click copy, enter our invoice number from that supplier and also our date. Now, a little tip if you're using additional costs, make sure you click copy from order because it won't come over when you click copy on the top section. If you want this cost to be included in your landed cost of the physical item, you need to make sure these two inventory accounts match. Mine isn't actually an inventory account because my chart of accounts aren't fully set up, but you. If you want this to be included in this physical item, you need to make sure this account here is the same as what's in here. If you want that cost to be distributed somewhere else, it's where you would change it to something like an expense account or wherever else you might want to track it. So for example, general expenses, okay? That's important to remember. Now, manual journals are the second route. And again, this is where you would be tracking um, a cost that you've got from another supplier, not the supplier you bought the items from, but you've incurred it somewhere else. So to see manual journals, you need to make sure you complete the invoice process first. So you would have just done that normally without the additional costs in there. And when you authorize your invoice, you'll see this manual journal box appears here. When you've got the manual journal box in here, you'll want to click plus. You'll then make sure you want to assign a debit and credit account. So in this case, you'll want to debit your inventory account. Mine's code 611. And you'll want to credit something like an expense account. 
you'll then want to put in a quick reference, let's say, um, and type in reference in. You can put something in like freight and maybe the invoice number you've got stored in something like Zero or QuickBooks. And then you'll just simply want to put in the cost of what you paid for that charge. So let's say £10. Okay. Final box is you can then choose how you wish to distribute this cost. So you can choose to distribute this based on the value of the item, quantities, weight, volume, or you can actually do it manually. So if you've got multiple lines on that order, you may want to distribute it, distribute it differently based on how much it costs or how much it weighs or even how much you've purchased. Okay, the most common routes are doing it by cost or you can do it manually. If you do it manually, you'll just need to make sure you authorise it first. And then once you've authorised it, you can then select view more and then you can choose how you want to distribute that across your multiple lines on your actual invoice. OK, and that's the first two methods. So additional costs and manual journals. Just to recap, manual journals is uh, sorry, additional costs is for any cost you've incurred from the supplier you bought the items from. Manual journals can really be used for that as well, but really it's used for any cost you've incurred from different suppliers and you just want to track the cost, but not the invoice. If you have incurred a cost from a different supplier, but you want to track the, both the invoices in the system and have the landed cost, then this is the final method that you would be doing. And this is by having both of those on the system. So what I can do is I'm just gonna undo these manual journals in here. And we're going to assume that this is an item. We've just purchased these gloves from this supplier. We've had to purchase some freight to actually get this item in or insurance. And we now need to attribute that back to this PL. So we're going to use the expense allocation process. So what you want to do to do that is go ahead to purchase and simple purchase. And we need to raise our purchase order for our freight. OK, so we want to enter in our supplier. So that's going to be the supplier that's charged us for that freight. We then we need to follow these next steps really specifically. OK, you want to select invoice first and blind receipt. Once you've selected that, this tax rule option isn't mandatory, by the way, it's just because I haven't got one signed. You then want to scroll down and you'll see you're going straight to the invoice. So you would be doing this once you've organised your freight and you've received that actual invoice for that freight. We can then enter in the invoice number that the freight company has sent us, the invoice date. And then we want to ignore this top section here and we want to come into the additional cost section and type in our item. So shipping, quantity, £10. And we want to make sure this account in here is an expense account. OK, so just to recap, we've raised our second purchase order for our freight that we want to link back to our original stock PO. We've selected invoice first, blind receipt, ignored the top section and just entered in our serviced item into the additional cost section. You can free text in here, but it's also it's really useful to have service items set up in the system just so it's a little bit quicker. Once you go ahead and select authorize, you'll then see a new box appear. If you're familiar with D, you might not have never have seen this before. And that's this expenses button here. Once we, we then want to select this expenses button, we'll then be able to see all the expenses that we've got on our invoice. We want to select them. And then we want to click allocation, which is where we can choose where are we linking this back to us. So as I mentioned earlier, you can link it to assemblies, stock transfers and production runs. But in our case, we're doing this to a purchase order. So you can do it to those other methods if you want to. We can select purchase invoice. We can then select from the drop down our invoice that we have just um, previously raised, which is PO36. And we can now see that was PO36 raised on today's date for Bayside Club and we want to allocate it to our inventory account. OK, we can see that we have a total to allocate of £10 and we want to allocate all £10 to that particular invoice. OK, it will distribute this cost um, proportionally across the invoice based on um, the value of the items. If you want it to Dear to do it automatically, you can click auto allocate and it will automatically allocate the total expense amount to that invoice. If you had multiple you wanted to do at this point, so let's say you received one freight invoice that may span across multiple purchase orders, 
and that's where you click allocation again purchase invoice and choose the second PO invoice that you want to allocate it to so for example I've got one here I may choose to want to do um, four pounds to this invoice and six pounds to that invoice and now we've distributed one freight invoice to two purchase orders okay so now all I need to do is go ahead and click save and we've now completed that process and linked our freight invoice back to our stock purchase invoice. As one final step, you can then go back to this purchase order. Select the purchase order and what that process does is it just creates a manual journal for you. So you can see in manual journals, we've now got one added which was this one here and you can see we allocated four pounds based on cost and it was for invoice number 0008 okay it's debited our inventory account and it's credited our expense account so those are the three ways to um get a landed cost in dia and and allocate purchase orders to each other and and get that view within dia itself if you have any questions on this video at all please feel free to leave them down below or if you have any different ideas for videos you'd like to see we'd really welcome those so thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe thank you